Oh, and we are live. Well, Excellent. thank you guys. Yay. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us on another episode of our Facebook Live. I am really excited to introduce you to the very lovely Karen Galley of Patient News. Aww. And um, I am so glad that you are so organized, Karen, because she got on an hour ago just to make sure that we had our tech issues uh, squared. And thank goodness you did, because we ran into a lot of issues. I currently <laughs> still have issues, but I mean, what's new? <laughs> so. You know what? I need to sign on an hour in advance with my technical skill. You know, at this stage of the game, I'm relying on a lot of support. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, it really does take a village, doesn't it? Well, Indeed. I... I'm, I'm really excited to introduce you uh, to the group. One, because you're amazing. And two, we were connected by Dr. Chris Phelps and everybody knows and adores Chris. So I told Chris, if, if, if she is someone that you are recommending, then, then I know that she is a high caliber person to know. So, and um, can you, I know that you are celebrating a big milestone this year with your company. How many years have you guys been in business, Karen? We we are celebrating. It's been 29 and a half years, Ashley. So oh yes, you know, 2023 will be our 30th anniversary exclusively dental. And I know you can't believe that it could be 30 years. I've been with the company since its inception. You know, my partner, our CEO has been with us since inception and, uh, yeah, it's just an incredible milestone for, you know, small, medium sized business in, in this day and age. We're, we're quite proud of that achievement of three decades. Well, kudos to you. That is that is so awesome. Now, for those who aren't very familiar with patient news, what do you do? OK, so. Patient News is a dental marketing and technology company. So as I've just said, we've been in business for 30 years now. We cut our teeth in direct mail, and that is a core competency for our organization. So way back, we're actually uh, based in Canada. Uh, most of our business is in the U.S., but way back in 1993, we were incorporated. We started with patient newsletters that went directly to your patients of record to educate them about your your services. Our first newsletter, I remember, we mailed for Dr. Paul Piccinini. It was such a big deal at the time because he was the dentist to the Toronto Argonauts. And that's the CFL, you know, football for anyone who's who's a fan. But, you know, we couldn't have been more thrilled. He was our first, you know, client, which was super exciting. And uh, from there, we moved into neighborhood newsletters. So getting out to communities surrounding practices. We launched in the U.S. in the year 2000 and we attended the Chicago midwinter meeting that was fun and exciting and I still love that city and love to get to that meeting whenever I can lots of great clients there we kind of took off from there for the next decade um, we really supported a lot of super high profile clients who spread the word about our company. You may know Dr. Bill Dorfman, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Deborah Gray King, a lot of uh, affiliates with the AACD and board members in that organization. And that really helped to propel us in, in those years of the organization. We moved from there into the tech side. Actually, in 2017, we hired a CTO, Mike Lasayoff and we launched Practice Zebra. So that's our tech side of the organization. It's our results platform. So it really helps to give the visibility on results for your direct mail. Is that your little guy coming to pay us a visit? Oh, it's over. Well, I... Hi. So it's, um, this is Cody. Hi, so Cody. Can you say hi to my friend, Karen? Hi. This hi, is, Cody. Uh, I try to put uh, Spidey and Friends on, and apparently, no, nobody, no, uh, apparently that, you want my phone? Hey, <laughs> sorry, Brian, don't watch. Brian doesn't <laughs> like when I just give electronics. Honey, mommy's, um, mommy's talking with her friends. No, 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 you can't. <laughs> Sometimes this only is... the phone will do. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> so, okay, here, here, you want the phone? Do you want well, ice I cream? I will give you ice. I will give you anything you want when we're done. 
How about that? No, no. Uh, I'm willing to give something too. <laughs> Oh, oh, here, here. You want YouTube? Oh my gosh, no, Karen. No, not YouTube. Not YouTube. I want that crayon one. The which one? Crayon. The crayon? He has a tongue tie. And he that's a whole be, other issue. Because he wants I'm to do something active. I missed it. What was that, Karen? He wants to do something active. Did I hear crayons or something like yes, that? Yes, but yes. it has to be a, a digital crayon. I right. Mean, regular, regular crayons just don't do. Isn't okay. gonna cut Can it. Can you sit over there? Can you sit over there? Thank you. Thank you. Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Karen. Don't be sorry at all. I uh, we were talking earlier, and uh, my partner uh, Wayne has a four year old as well. So you're in. I, I, I'm around that, and I I know exactly what what it's like. And uh, you know, I myself have a, a four year old grandson. Believe it or not. So. Oh my yes, gosh. Yes, and a newborn. Two two grandsons. Oh my goodness! What well, congrats? Yeah. That's such Thank a fun you. age. Those are fun ages. Yeah. Um, my uh, my husband has the older two in in baseball practice right now, so I have Cody and uh, yeah, it's a life work balance, right? <laughs> it is. It is difficult to achieve, especially for women in business. Yeah. You know, I think it's changing a little bit, but there's still work to be done in that Absolutely. regard. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, um, back to you. Like I want, I, I, let's get back to what everybody really wants to know. And that's mm -hmm. direct mail. It is, is it dead? Is it antiquated? Like what, I mean, obviously everybody, everybody thinks that everything is digital, right? Like yeah. let's be on TikTok, let's do all the social media, but there is a very large demographic who are not on social. So uh, what are the, the pros of, of having a direct mail piece? Well, I love that you've come right out and said that. It's kind of the elephant in the room, uh, you know, when discussions around direct mail uh, come into play. So direct mail is, is definitely not dead. In fact, it's highly re relevant and very viable in this day and age. I would argue even more so because it fits perfectly in a multi-channel approach. And you mentioned that you're tapping into potentially a segment of the market that wouldn't necessarily respond in other channels or doesn't today necessarily have a need or an urgent need. So they're not moving to search. But as a direct mail company, we of course are on top of all of the metrics, the statistics, the industry information. And from a global perspective, there's been a secular decline in mail. So there is a retraction in mail. We're no longer getting our bills and transactional mail. There's actually an increase in advertising and promotional mail. So it's moving from 70 plus odd billion to 74 billion or you know, a strong 5% increase in the last year, just even in, wow. in uh, promotional mail. So it's it's not dead. A lot of times people also think there's different demographics that don't necessarily resonate with mail. Again, that's a bit of a misnomer and lots of different studies you can see that even uh, the millennials enjoy receiving mail. It makes them feel important. It's different from, from the overload that they're experiencing you know, online. So I read a study recently that we are going to soon be spending 44 years of our life in front of screens, whether it's phones and televisions and, um, you know, our, our tablets and, and so on. So 44 years, you're getting a lot of screen fatigue. And certainly through COVID, it was exacerbated with Zoom meetings and everything else. So direct mail offers a, a new channel, a, a refreshing channel, one that's more tactile and easier to, to, uh, to comprehend. So it's it's definitely not dead and it's very, very viable and relevant today. We've built our business around it. I mean, obviously a, a business cannot be in business for almost 30 years if what you are doing is dead. So I think I think that that is proof in and of itself. And um, my husband just came home and grabbed Cody. Yay, so husband. That was screaming, I swear, I am not neglecting my child. He's no longer here. So um, we wouldn't have believed you would. 
<laughs> oh, I'll miss him. Bye, Cody. Oh, uh, I will let him know. Um, yeah. So obviously, you don't just do a whole lot of just massive flooding into everyone's post stuff. Post, um, what do you call it? Box. Post box. Mailboxes. Yeah. Mailbox. Yes. Yeah. And I was so. Uh, we are opening our second location, as you know, mm -hmm. and we are also reducing our dependence on insurance. Mm -hmm. And I know that not everybody is on social media. Like, a, and my target demographic, I would love to treat people who are in their 50s, 60s, who are now empty nesters, who have expendable income to, you know, to make their smiles nicer they tend to be higher value patients honestly in in that demographic you're absolutely right and they may be on social media and some of these other channels but the interesting thing with direct mail it's really more top of the funnel direct mail is an awareness building channel if you look at the marketing funnel or if you look at the patient journey so direct mail is the top of the funnel and that's building awareness in your community with your target audience again it works synergistically synergistically with your other channels. So when you move to your patient research um, phase of the journey and people are online, a lot of times search is name-based search where they already know your name or the practice name and they're looking for more information. But becoming aware, the, a statistic that I love to consider and I think you should consider is 50% of people don't even regularly attend the dentist. So by default, they're not even looking for you mm -hmm. to begin with. So they won't be paying as much attention to those other channels. They need to, your practice needs to come into their sphere of awareness and direct mail goes into their homes. People receive their mail, they open their mail. Mail has a 90 to 95% open rate. Um, it, it may not resonate with you. It doesn't resonate with everyone, but that's not the point. The point is it resonates with a percentage of the market and the response is, is strong to direct mail. Absolutely. And in our discovery calls, I was actually extremely impressed by the level of sophistication that your company pours into these campaigns. Can you walk us through, like say I'm a potential client because I mean, I am, um, what, <laughs> how, how does that look? Do I, you're gonna run a demographics report and, and all of that? Like, can you walk me through the process? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, interestingly, preparing for our conversation today, I reacquainted myself with the process by interviewing my frontline staff. I'm a little further removed from the frontline, so I wanted to make sure that I was really refreshed on all of their processes and systems. And I have to say, I, I shouldn't say this, but I was actually blown away, <laughs> shouldn't have to say this, by their knowledge and expertise. So I spoke to a neighborhood distribution target specialist. I spoke to an account manager for content and offer strategy. I spoke to a Zebra tutorialist who reviews metrics and looks at campaign results. And I was just, you know, really, it's incredible. They, they're so passionate about each aspect of the success of the direct mail campaign and how they impact that. So just starting, I guess, in terms of the process you asked about, the creative brief would be the first place to start where we would speak with you directly about the practice what are your goals you know what does your current operation look like what procedures do you want to focus on is there anything going on in the practice are you adding an associate are you you know what's is there new technologies um, by the way I've got a little sign on my computer that says you know so I'm trying not to say you know that much <laughs> <laughs> so you can add up the number of times and text me later. Hopefully it's not too, too many, but I've been reminded. It'll be a I, drinking game in that. Yeah, How about that? that's right. It'll be a drinking game. Once we have all of the data and information from you, we then take it to our side. So we have some incredible tools. We would first of all, look at the makeup of your existing patient base. So we would interface with your practice. We would geoplot your best patients geographically on a map. 
We would look for like audiences with those patient profiles. We look at age, income, homeowners versus renters, families. Um, we look at psychographics, demographics. The United States is actually broken up into 67 different, they call it tapestries, so personas. And we dig down into the buying uh, patterns of these personas. How much do they spend on food, on housing, on health care, and the percentages? And this is broken down by walk route. You don't have to do an entire zip. You break it down. We're literally targeting by household who we believe the ideal patient is based on your target, based on your profile. And then we overlay all of that data and develop the target list. So it really is um, quite scientific. That would be the first part, content, of course, and format. Uh, and I don't just want to blab on. So if you have no, or you want this to is like, interrupt this me. This is what everybody has questions about. So if sure. you want to dial in on like the details, you go right ahead. Uh, I'll continue to dial in. So my next conversation was with Amber in uh, you know, our account management area. She talked about strategizing with respect to the format and the content. So first of all, the format, we really subscribe to the newsletter format because it's got so much real estate and it's the best tool to express your value proposition and to provide value value add and an educated patient's a more valuable patient. Interestingly, they're, they're fewer and further between in the direct mail environment because they're difficult to execute. It's a lot easier to execute a postcard. Uh, it's more difficult when you're developing content. It's also more difficult than a brochure, which you tend to produce thousands of and then mail the same piece over and over. So we can talk about that later, but the ability to change, to adjust, to tweak the list, to tweak the content, to tweak the offer as we continue to analyze results is, is critical. That's another potentially missing step in, in direct mail campaigns that are not successful. So moving on to the content piece, I was speaking again with uh, Amber and she's talking about the content in terms of um, providing your unique value proposition. So you've got the real estate in a newsletter to use and to, and to share that information. So you want to include um, your a map, you want to include uh, an introductory offer of some type, and we can dig into that a little bit further too. Some people are not interested in quote discount dentistry, and that's not necessarily the point with an offer. Uh, you definitely want to include imagery that reflects your target demographic. You want to include imagery of appealing imagery of the doctor, the staff, the office environment. Um, so a lot goes into the content development as well. So that's sort of phase two. Um, and then from there, we move on to, to execution and the, the newsletters distributed. And from there, it's the, the response and how are we measuring that response and how are we adjusting that? And then what's happening in the office and training of the front desk team and call yeah. conversion. So there's so many levels to a successful campaign. It's not just one aspect. And if any of these aspects are out of whack, well, first of all, you know, we can always correct a mistake, but if anything's out of whack, then we can work on it and improve it and continue to, to make sure that we're generating the results. That's, I mean, it, it's like, you know what you guys are doing over there. I don't know. <laughs> it's like my team knows what they're doing. <laughs> well, I, I want to say too that, so, so I'm just going to summarize the process because at least for me as someone who has never done direct mail before like this is like speaking a different language and as someone who receives a lot of direct mail from surrounding dentists they all look the same they mm -hmm. all are the same shape they're this they're the same intro offer so i think that is where the new startup doc thinks well, I don't want to do that. That's like super old and everybody throws it away. But I was very intrigued at, at what you guys do because you, you're a full, you do everything from the, the writing. So all of the content um, you were telling, or our, your team was telling our team that we can have custom this, custom that, or if we didn't want to 
think too much about it, then your company would provide that, that information for us. And it was just nice to have someone who really doesn't just design like a pretty piece of print, but you're actually doing all of the, all of the numbers. And when I saw, I don't know if you have the information about my office available, but it was like, holy smokes, is that what, um, is that what the, the market looks like? It's crazy. Like, cause I knew, I know that California is saturated and, but to see that level of like, like what you said, you the can competitive really, environment, the yes, DTF. Mm -hmm. yes. And how you can target specific households. Mm -hmm. and Absolutely. I, I think that's, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah, there's a, there's even more that goes, it, it goes into further depth. You mentioned the competitive analysis. I mean, that's a critical element too that I didn't even discuss. So you would want to be mindful. And I would encourage all of um, your viewers and people within the group to stay abreast of what competitors are doing so that you're aware of what's currently in market. If you can subscribe to their social channels or, you know, keep things that arrive in the mail, uh, you can then have a comparison of what you're doing and really effectively position yourself within the marketplace. You mentioned the format. I'm presuming you're getting a lot of postcards or some postcard mailings when you say the format similar or yes. brochure. Um, I think it's the whatever's fold, folded. A trifold yes. brochure. A trifold. I get right. a lot of trifolds which is mostly a static piece. You won't find that the content will change. Again, with the newsletter, and you mentioned the content, we are a content company, again, another core value. So we have thousands of articles. We have in-house editorial team. We're constantly updating that library with the latest technology um, elements and, and various other things. And then we piece together your newsletter with content that fits your specific situation and each issue is unique and different so the inside pages of the newsletter is all refreshed content we like to even include a recipe and people have been known to save hold on cut out use those recipes in the future i know it might sound even to my own ears it sounds a little bit antiquated but believe it or not direct mail is really delivering strong results so our clients are getting an average average of six to one roi within six months with a campaign so for every dollar spent they are actually realizing six dollars in patient production and pay you know the thing with patient production is with our integration with the practice we can see exactly who is responding to the direct mail we can match by phone number we can match by address we can look at exactly how much they're spending whether they're bringing additional family members the visibility is a hundred percent so you're not relying on anecdotal information from the front office you can see in black and white that's a zebra thing see in black and white your results on that note i'll have a sip of my branded yes i love it so that's where the zebra it came from i was always wondering i mean i love zebras see your results in black and white it's isn't that brilliant marketing don't you love that Ashley? oh i love yes. that Yes. So good. It's well, an incredible I, platform. I, I could just talk a, a mile a minute about that too, but yes, it's uh, yeah, incredible platform. So I, I wanted to ask you, so I can tell you, so if, if my target demographic is a woman in her 50s, 60s, who wants to invest in cosmetic dentistry, you, and, and I tell your team this, they're going to hand select what zip codes, what addresses to mail these to. And then let's say that for that month, the newsletter will be um, aging, how your smile is aging, your, your, your aging you or something to that note. So, or if I was targeting implants, mm -hmm. then you already have all the content to help like drip, drip. We do. Drip. 
Yes. We do. We do. And we have content that's specific to the technologies or just specific to the procedure. The inside pages tend to be more general content. To your point, you can do a full custom program. We recommend monthly mailings for a campaign, a neighborhood campaign for whatever time period, let's call it a year uh, initially. And a monthly campaign would be the recommended frequency. We can customize all four pages of a four page newsletter, but sometimes that's not the most efficient route to go. And okay. people like some easy content too. You don't want it just packed with, you know, information that's, you know, intense or to your point, talking about, you know, challenges with your smile. You want things that are uplifting and, you know, how the benefits based, essentially. Okay. Um, so some lighter content. So it makes it very easy for the practice to execute when we have the inside pages. And then we fully customize the front and the back pages according to our schedule of, of events, what we want to promote over the next quarter. I recommend content changes quarterly to give it enough time in market to really generate results. Then take a you know chill pill at three or four months, look at the content, you look at the response rates and make your tweaks and adjustments and changes and then relaunch into the, the next quarter. So that seems to be have worked extremely effectively for, for our clients that and, program is scheduled gotcha and you are 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 you guys using dummy phone numbers to track who is calling from these absolutely i mean the term dummy doesn't sound very appealing <laughs> What do you call it? But yes, we put we call them dedicated. Dedicated. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's that funny. Really no, it does, so dedicated. Yeah. There is a dedicated call tracking number on every single piece. So again, you can see who exactly has called and our results platform has all the call data. So the calls are tracked, the calls are, you know, are recorded. The call we score the calls. So you're, we can do team training at the front desk. So it's a, there's a 25 point call scoring scale. We will score on the greeting. We right down to the appointment. Obviously, it's weighted based on outcomes, um, but it really helps the team in terms of there's videos. There's a phone power video series built right into Zebra, so that if they're having challenges answering questions about insurance or any other element of the call, which is a, an issue for them. Them, they can listen to those phone power videos and improve their performance. It's a great tool for front office managers who are training. And that's not even touching call conversion metrics. And Chris will you know, tell you, Dr. Phelps, our, our friend, dear friend, call conversion is such a critical element in terms of driving success for any marketing campaign, not just direct mail, but any campaign and a small tweak to your live call answer rate or your conversion rate. And I've got all kinds of statistics and metrics in this regard can make a huge difference to outcomes. Do you, um, is, is there a, a contract? Do you do month to month? Like I'm trying to think of all the questions. Yeah. That people do you know ask. what, Ashley? Thirty years, we do not do contracts. I okay. mean, it just. But but honestly, I also like to share that it's highly recommended that in order to achieve the results that you want, marketing, you need to look at, I don't want to say need, but you should maybe look at it as an investment in your practice versus a cost center. And I know it's hard because I don't like spending half a million dollars on marketing either. I'm, you know, but it's an investment in our future, you know, growth for the organization. So um, I really highly recommend that you don't just it's like hitting a nail with a hammer. If you hit it once, the picture's going to fall. I mean, you have to hammer it in to people's. They have to come into their collective conscious that you are there. And that does take time. I know there's a cash a cliche in marketing that, you know, your marketing companies say it's going to take time to build results. Just, you know, give us this time. It's going to be four months, six months, eight months. But that is because it does take time 
to build the trust within your community and for someone to be ready at the time and place to, to make a decision. So if you don't plan on committing to it, you probably are gonna waste some marketing dollars. You really have to give it. We recommend the neighborhood newsletters um, monthly and a patient newsletter quarterly. So keeping in touch with your patients in between appointments is also something um, critical on the retention side, which we haven't touched. Absolutely. Well, I mean, gosh, can you talk about what a healthy or what to expect in terms of a marketing budget for a, a startup would be? Is yes. it different in Canada versus the U.S.? Uh, but the metrics are a little bit different in terms of the patient value and spend. But generally speaking, the investment is is similar. Okay. And it, every practice is unique and different. Cash flow scenarios are unique and different. Uh, focus of the practice and services. Um, so it's really it's really difficult. If you're a, a practice that's already established and you're in a steady phase, you might want to consider a three to five percent marketing expense of your gross revenue. Um, if there's anything that's happening in practice where you need a booster, you want a boost or a lift, if you're onboarding a new associate, you're introducing a new procedure or service, or you want to rejig your services in, in practice, you're going to have to elevate that percentage spend. And as a startup, you know, you can spend probably should be spending. You don't have a strong revenue stream, at least very initially. So you need to then look at it like an investment in the practice. And you know, maybe you're spending 15 or 20% in your very early startup years. When you look at the investment you're making in your building and your infrastructure and in your education and training, don't forget the marketing piece because that's the piece that you're investing in growth. So you're investing in your operations initially, and marketing is the investment in growth. I, I heard uh, Travis Campbell, uh, who's a great client and, and friend of ours too, he's on the speaker circuit and I think pretty well connected with um, Chris Phelps too. As a matter of fact, we have a case, a direct mail case study in Chris Phelps' new book. But as Travis Campbell likes to say, invest to the level you want to be. So if you're a million dollar practice and you want to be a $1.5 million practice, you may look to invest at that level in order to build that growth avenue for yourself. So that would be my advice. Every situation is different and um, we would help you to look at that and look at the goals and look at your budget and your cash flow and what's possible, doable, realistic. We certainly would never want to put anyone in a situation where they were financially challenged. So that's that's our obligation. You know, we've as a mission of patient news, we've never wanted to be the biggest, but we've wanted to be the most respected. So something we are not going to do is put someone in a situation where they shouldn't be doing mm -hmm. a campaign that's too expensive for them to execute. No, absolutely. Absolutely. Do you recommend having specific landing sites um, for different? Yeah, different absolutely. Groups? Lots of our, we, we've recently, you can see actually on my backdrop here, I have a QR code. A, another recent innovation to our uh, direct mail pieces is to incorporate a QR code. We also are now incorporating personalization. Um, so all of these things provide a further outlet. We talked earlier about direct mail being a driver to other channels. So, you know, 90, 90 plus, I have that stat somewhere in my notes here. Um, uh, what is it? 92% of consumers move from a print piece to learn more online. So, you know, they might call you from the print piece, they might scan a QR code and go to your website or go to a custom landing page. Um, and if they do, then they might call from your website instead of your newsletter number, they may fill out a form, you know, so it, it all becomes a synergistic marketing effort and direct mail just elevates all of those other channels. 
But to your point, yes, custom landing pages are very popular um, and, and definitely tie in with the QR codes and, and various specific URLs and, and things like that. So that makes perfect sense. Okay. I'm gonna. I I wrote down a list of questions. I want to make sure. <laughs> yeah, that I, no problem. I, I know we're kind of we're kind of jumping all over the place. No, and hopefully, it's like people so are following good. a little bit. It's been so good because I I know I'm selfishly just talking to you because I'm we're about to start this process and it's just so interesting because our office we are like I said we are we 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 just got out of network with Delta uh -huh. and then we are slowly trying to remove ourselves from other insurance plans because mm -hmm. it's amazing how you you instantly write off 40% off of your UCR. Well, that's yeah. that's a marketing piece. You basically mm -hmm. are sacrificing that to the insurance companies yeah. in exchange for a patient in a chair. So um, now I'm looking at everything from a very different perspective because now I want to to grow a a startup the way I really wanted to from the very beginning, which was mm -hmm. a very boutique fee for service, yeah, fee for mm -hmm. service, like high touch point. Mm -hmm. um, and now it's okay. How can I use our unique selling proposition, our mm -hmm. our USP, mm -hmm. to really attract? Mm -hmm. those high quality patients not yeah. like let's just throw a net and yeah. and see what we get do you have an in-house plan we do yeah, yeah. um and and i haven't personally reviewed the the history on your file yet but i will do that when we're off the the call um in my time tomorrow but we do find that's an, a, a great thing to promote in the newsletter we're finding that in many cases, not all, but in many cases, the, the in-house plan patients are more valuable than non-insured patients, you know, and, and other plan patients. So that's another great way to promote. You know, we talk about the special offers and again, kind of circling back to if you can afford to do an introductory new patient offer, you have to consider the lifetime value of the patient as well. So there's the immediate ROI, but the average practice in the U.S., a new patient is worth 1,800 in the first year, followed by 1,000 in, in subsequent years. So if a patient stays with the practice for eight or 10 years, you are looking between, you know, eight and 10,000 in uh, gross revenue from that patient. So how much is it worth to have an introductory offer to get that patient in the door? That's just something to consider on the side. However, I completely understand the, the fee for service and not wanting to promote discount dentistry or not having that as part of the profile of, of your practice. But things like promoting your dental membership plan mm -hmm. uh, is something that's a strong offer without necessarily uh, promoting a discount. Uh, we have lots of clients who promote a second opinion on, on dentistry. Um, or um, what are some of the other things? There's there's lots of different things that aren't necessarily discounted dentistry mm -hmm. that you can that you can promote. Specific services too, if you want to focus on Invisalign or an offer in that regard. Um, and the best person to talk to is our account management team at Patient News. Once they review your demographics, your target area, your ideal patient, your current pay high value patient in practice, they overlay all that with your goals. Then they'll tell you, I think you should use XYZ offer strategy. Yes, so it's they really so, I, I love, I love it so much because I get an email in my inbox and it will say, this is how many new patients you've had. This is how many patients have att attrition. And um, it's, it's just, I love that you guys really incorporate into our, our PMS, our practice management software, because you're not just blindly mailing these out and not really measuring. And speaking of measuring, can you walk us through how you are tracking and measuring your results and, and when, when you know to re redirect, when you know mm -hmm. to, to pivot? 
Right. Okay. I will do. And and you started on something there, which was interesting. And I think too, isn't always brought to the forefront. And that is your net new patients to practice. So we see data where a practice is getting lots of new patients and they are super excited and seem, you know, busy. But then on further analysis, we look at their lost patients or patients who haven't been in practice for 24 months. And lo and behold, there's actually a net loss, a net loss of patients to the practice, even though they perceive they have a steady new patient flow. So it's just one of those interesting metrics that if you don't have your eyes on it, you wouldn't necessarily understand the impact, the larger impact that that's having on your practice. And you may want to refocus because, of course, it's more expensive to attract a new patient than it is to keep a good patient in, yes. in practice. And the number one reason patients leave is perceived indifference. That's one of the only reasons. So it begs the question, what's happening in between appointments with your patients? Are you doing anything to occasionally stay top of mind or to touch base with them about things that are going on in the practice or updates or you know educational information? But back to tracking. So as earlier mentioned, there is a, a call tracking number on the newsletter, all of that data. So we integrate with your practice system. All of that data comes through zebra you see the calls you see who the callers are you can listen to the call you can see we have the call scored um, all of that data on the patient spend just flows right through practice zebra and zebra is agnostic by the way it's a marketing results platform that can you, know, you can look at results from other campaigns that you're doing and compare them with what's happening with the campaigns you're doing with patient news so you can integrate all of your um, google analytics and and you can, it, it can just it can be the hub for all of your marketing results. Uh, but again, it's down to the patient penny, you know, of, of spend. So that's yeah, awesome. Full, full visibility. Yes. And, and you can see, I, I can start rhyming off metrics. I don't know what, you know, if you want to hear everything, but of course you're aware that a new patient's more valuable than and it, you know, an existing patient, right? I don't know what the metrics are for your practice, but sometimes it could be two or three X. And that's why it's important to leave available appointments for your new patients mm -hmm. flow if you want to see the practice on an upward trajectory. So it is a fine balance of marketing between the new patient flow and holding on to your existing good patients in practice. So you're recommending one newsletter per quarter for, is that for new patients you said? No, so new patients, it's a neighborhood community distribution and we recommend okay. a monthly program. Your okay. existing patients, there's a very high open rate on in envelope mail. And we do recommend a patient newsletter to reduce attrition, to boost your referral programs, to keep your patients educated and informed, and just top of mind to show that you're thinking about them when they're not in the chair or having a bill or a transaction. It really, you know, it's just a, a nice touch point that maybe costs, you know, you would probably offer your patient a cup of coffee if you could. So for the price of a cup of coffee, you're sending them a value added piece, um, maybe with some personalized data and what's going on in the practice. Do you have a new hygienist or is there a new piece of equipment or do you want them to know about an element of the mouth body connection or how their oral health is impacting their systemic health and, you know, things that are going to be a value add for them in between appointments. Patients dribble off the schedule. It's quite amazing. I, I, I think it was Howard Fran who was describing it as, you know, the, the coffee cup that, you know, you, you keep pouring patients in the top and, you know, somehow the cup continues to flow with over and miraculously 20 years from now, you have the same number of mm -hmm. front office staff and hygienists, even though you've onboarded you know, hundreds and hundreds yes. of patients. So you, you know, need to be mindful of paying attention to your existing patients and not just your, your net new. Yes, yes. 
Absolutely. You could send them an email newsletter. I mean, I wouldn't be opposed to that, but you're definitely not going to have the same open rates and necessarily gotcha. the same engagement. Look at our emails. I don't know what your inbox looks like, but yeah. Um, I don't, I try yeah. to avoid my inbox. <laughs> I know. I know. And not all of us go to the mail, you know, the mailbox with relish, but 55% of adults are reported to actually enjoy getting their mail and sorting through it. And you're right, some of it, especially, you know, maybe leaflets and flyers, you know, for, you know, I was about to say Canadian Tire, but that's not going to resonate with you, you know, Lowe's or whatever your home. Oh. You know. <laughs> but, uh, you know, some people just love all of those things too. So there's the, you're just trying to resonate with the audience out there that's in that channel and in that market versus some of the other channels that, you know, of course you've mastered yeah. the social media channels, which is awesome. Oh, uh, I don't know about mastered. We, we have fun on social. That's for sure. That's good. Um, and having fun's important as you know, it is it's not worth helpful. doing anything without the fun. That's right. And it, do you have any last things that you want to discuss, Karen? Can you believe we've already almost finished our time? No, today? I cannot believe we've already it's, almost finished. We have like um, about 10 minutes left. Wow. <laughs> last words of advice. Oh, geez. Okay. So um, I would say share the metrics. You know, our most successful clients share information with their teams. So I would encourage you, A, if you're doing a neighborhood or newsletter program, share the content, review the content, make sure the content is mirrored in your online channels, have this similar, you know, obviously your branding, you want to be consistent, uh, make sure your front desk and we could do a whole other segment on call handling and phone power and the metrics associated there and, you know, some of the impacts those things might have. But I'm going to leave it on the word that we just you know, discussed a minute ago, which was fun. Be positive. Have fun. Life goes far too fast. I'm in my 50s now. My kids are grown. I have grandkids. And you know, I'm lucky, very, very lucky to still have a, a thriving business. But we've remained innovative in everything we've done over the year. I've got my, uh, years ago, we introduced, this is my positive bracelet. It even has the word positive right on oh, it. Oh, nice. Yeah. So we've introduced, uh, if you've ever read or heard of the fish philosophy, it was a book that was from the um, uh, Seattle fish market. And it's just a simple four tenets of business. It's an easy read, but it's about, you know, having fun while you're doing your work. Not really the work hard, play hard, but the have fun. Don't take yourself too seriously mm -hmm. and stay present and focused in every interaction that you do have and make someone else's day. And if you follow those tenets, uh, you, I just think you can't go wrong. Well, thank you so much, Karen. I loved, I loved having you on. And I know that um, you have a QR code there, but if they're watching from their phone, they're not able to scan. I just yeah, you that. can. Wait, how? You, you can. I don't know if it's close enough, but my team held their phone up to the QR code and it, just, it went right to their phones. Oh, no, I mean, if they're watching us, this live on their phone. Oh, right. If they're they watching can. us live yes, on their phones. Yes. Right, right, so, right, right. Okay, of course. So, uh, how else can, can people from our group get in touch with you? The easiest is online, you know, patientnews.com. I would be happy to give anyone my cell phone. Why don't I just share it right now? It's 705. Oh, my gosh. Are you going <laughs> to... <laughs> yeah, well, hey, I'm here here in a bit. 705-754-5021. Feel free to text me. And because we're a marketing company, I would also be thrilled to send you. We have a Patient News and Zebra branded mugs to remind you of uh, the, all the good things that we've talked about today. I love it. I love it. And then um, is there a way for them to let you know that, that they're a part of the Facebook, the startup community, or they just? 
You know, they could just say, you know, definitely just say part of the Facebook community and uh, hopefully we're going to see everyone in Napa. Yeah. Yes. I'm thrilled so to, this will be the first time we've participated with your group and I'm super, super excited and looking forward to, to seeing everyone who's participating in that amazing event. And that's, uh, it's coming up quick. It is. We are less than two months away. Yeah. So we will be cheers, cheering, cheersing, yeah, cheers. toasting, I'm going toasting in Napa. <laughs> cheersing with our wine. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Yes. Well, thank you so much for your time, Karen. I look forward to meeting you in person in a couple months. I am too. Super excited about it. Thank you so much, Ashley. And my husband, yeah, we're going to be in Napa. I think we mentioned my husband's a wine collector. He has 5,000 bottles of wine. So I'll have him bring something special and we'll do a comparison with the you know, California grape there. Well, I look forward to that for sure. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Take care, everyone. Thanks for joining in. And thank you again to Karen Galley from Patient News. Take care, guys, and reach out to Karen if you have any questions or just, I mean, just to get started. Yes, just to get started. All right. Take care, everyone. Bye.